having a look at the area of a sector and the length of an arc today. Now to establish a couple of things, just a couple of properties about circles. Um, uh, whenever I draw two radii on a circle, as long as it's not a diameter, as long as it's not straight across the middle, I split that circle into two, two sectors, uh, the major sector and the minor sector. In the major, and the one that we tend to deal with normally is the minor. So this guy's the major. I'm not going to label the minor because I need to go and draw some other things on here. In the same way, when I draw that same um, those same two radii on there, radii on there, assuming it does not go straight across and form a diameter, uh, I form a major arc and a minor arc. And just as previously, this part is the major arc. And the red one there is the minor arc, which is the one we're going to focus on here. But technically, um, we, we tend to deal with either obtuse or acute angles, uh, which is why we tend to deal with uh, the minor arc and the ma minor sector as well. But we could do the exact same thing uh, with the major ones as well. So two things we need, two formulas we need to remember here. Now, they are all just based on the couple of basic ones that you would have done in year eight. The first one of those, is L, that arc length there in red, equals theta over 360 times 2 pi r. Now I say it's the arc length in red, technically it would work for the one in blue as well. The angle would just be the obtuse angle, not the, the sorry, the reflex angle, not the obtuse angle there. Um, now if we go and convert this into, this angle here into radians, instead of degrees. Now our conversion factor for that, would be to, I need to get into radians, so I need to multiply it by 180, and I need to divide it by pi. Now, if I go put all that information in there, I'm gonna have L equals theta over 360, multiplied by 180, over pi, multiplied by two pi r. Now, there's a bit that can go here if we have a look. Bit that can simplify out. Our pi's are going to go, which is nice. Nice to not have pi involved there. Um, our 180 and 360 can simplify. That's going to give me theta over 2 over here. But I've actually got a 2 and a divided by 2, which means all I'm left with here in the end is actually L equals R theta. That's a much simpler formula. That only works if we're dealing with radians, though, not with uh, not with degrees. If I have 45 degrees and 5 centimetres, I can't just say 45 times 5. Um, but I can do that with radians. And it gives us a nice, easy way to get things in exact values as well. If I did the exact same thing with the area of this, uh, with this sector here, I'd have A equals theta over 360 multiplied by pi r squared. And once again, I would do the exact same thing. I would go and multiply by 180 and divide by pi. I'd end up with a similar thing happening. Uh, I'd, my 180 and 360 would work together. The pi's would go. And what I'd end up with is I've got theta over 2 and r squared. Now, the way that we normally write this is r squared theta over 2. And again, a much simpler way to deal with things if I've got my angles in radians. Okay, so that's our two formulas we need to remember. The area of our sector is r squared theta over two, and the length of our arc is L equals r theta. Two nice, nicer ones to deal with um, that you will get comfortable with using as we move forward. Let's have a look at an example. A simple example here, and then one that's got a little bit of thinking to do with it. Our first thing to have a look at is calculate the perimeter and area of a sector uh, with a radius of eight centimeters that subtends an angle of three pi over four at the center. So we've got our A for theta. That's three pi over four. For reference, it's 135 degrees, an obtuse angle, but we're not gonna use 135 degrees at all. We're going to use our two formulas. We're going to use L equals R theta and A equals R squared theta over two, where theta is in degrees in both cases. So that means L is going to be uh, eight times three pi over four. I'm gonna leave both these as exact values, uh, which gives me 24 over four. And we should have a unit with that as well. 
which is centimeters. Now, if having a look at the area, our area here is going to be a half by eight squared, which is my radius by three pi over four. I'm going to go ahead and put that in my calculator, but I'm actually going to uh, leave pi out of the equation. Okay, I'll explain why in a second. Now that gives me 24 pi centimeter squared. Now, if I put everything in my calculator here, except for pi, I'm just going to get a nice 24. If I go put pi in there, I'm not going to get my exact value that I that I suggested we should do before. Okay, but if I leave pi out of the calculator, it will leave everything exact, and I can just go uh, write pi in afterwards. Now. The second thing we need to do here, by what amount must this angle be extended so that the arc is 40 centimetres in length? So I want to know now what's going to give me L equals 40. I've already got uh, L equals 6 pi, which is uh, about 18, 19 centimetres. Uh, what, what am I going to have to do here to, to get L equals 40? Well, what I'm actually going to need to do here is say this time 40 equals 8 theta. I don't know what my angle is here, which means that theta is five radians. So that my extension would be five minus what I've already got, three pi over four. I'm going to turn that into a single fraction, which is 20 minus three pi all over four. That's not going to be a particularly nice value. If I put it in my calculator, I end up with 2.64 radians, which is a little bit more than 150 degrees, but our exact value here is better. So my angle needs to increase by 20 minus three pi over four, so that I get an arc length of 40 centimeters. I hope this has been helpful. Please make sure you really commit to memorizing and using those two formulas, L equals R theta and A equals R squared theta over two.